So I want to start off letting everyone listening know that I'm sorry if I didn't get to your specific question. And Matthew, I'm sorry if it seems like you're repeating yourself. But as people who feel like we know Caitlin from watching her literally till her end, we do feel a sort of demand for answers. And I know for myself, I keep going back to her last moments, her last breaths, where I know she felt unloved by the people who are supposed to love her most. And that is where I, I feel everyone failed her. I have a lot I want to start off saying that are my own remaining concerns after speaking with you and learning about you because when I'm done, feel free to throw us a bone at you because I don't want you, I don't want to hate you. I actually think you and Caitlin could have had an incredible bond and friendship based on what I know of you personality wise. Since we're Facebook friends now, last night I, I did browse on your page two years back when you were posting in 2013 about Tammy and it looked like you had copied and pasted a message that she sent you where she was demanding more than $60 a week, I think, and said that that amount barely paid for Caitlin's toiletries and anything else, and that another man was essentially being Caitlin's father since you wouldn't, and that hurt my heart to read. And around that time, I also saw that you had many pictures of a cool-looking car and lots of family presence around you and swimming parties and whatnot, laughter, cleanliness, nice-looking clothes, and just knowing that you knew Caitlin was living and filth that also hurt my heart and I saw two posts on your page from Caitlin one where she was telling you to attend parenting classes which I'm sure that was from Tammy and then another where she just said hi and you responded that you love and miss her and I couldn't help but wonder why your response was simply left at I miss you as though she were already gone and accessing her was 100% impossible to achieve all right so when you see the nice car and all of that, that is the same time that I was buying Caitlin all of the things that they were taking to the pawn shop and selling. That is the same time that I gave Tammy $500 so Caitlin could go to Washington, D.C. with the school trip or whatever, right? So this is not the time where I wasn't uh, able to pay child support, right? So all of that ties into the Army deal that I went through where I was on active duty, not getting paid. Then it came back and they had to back pay me for all the time that I was on active duty, but they wasn't paying me. And Caitlin did get things from me at that point in time. Uh, they just sold them, right? Right. I gave them an excess of money. But again, I have no... I had no way of making them do the right thing. Right. It, it, that's just out of, that was out of my control altogether. It's not going to happen. And the reason why I didn't respond to what you would presume to be Caitlin is because that's all it is, is a presumption that it was Caitlin. Right. Because there's never a time that I could call and talk to Caitlin where I wasn't potentially talking to Tammy. Okay, see, I wondered about that. Yeah, it, I, I know from the outside looking in how it looked. Yeah. But sometimes things aren't as they seem. And uh, if you talk to anybody in my family, they would confirm any of this. Right? It's not... Yeah. It, it, it wasn't easy, right? And this, I mean... It's... I'm really sorry. It is really hard when you're the only one that is supposed to jump through all the hoops. Um, I'm sorry. No, I'm I'm sorry. Um I, 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 so one, one thing that, um, the only time I saw Caitlin ever say anything about you, I'm sure you're, I mean, you probably already know, but word for word, she just, she said, no, I, I don't have a dad. I have a dad, but he's not my dad. He's my father. He gave birth to me. He helped create me, but he's not a dad. Like he lives two miles away from me, but he doesn't care about me. When I OD'd and was in the hospital, he didn't show up. He didn't care to. He didn't see me. He didn't visit. Well, you know, it it goes back to, you know, um, Tammy's goal was always to pretty much do the worst things possible to me, right? So any situation 
that they could put me in, that they could benefit from, is what they were going to do. I can't go to a place where Tammy and Anthony are, or they are going to put me in a situation that is it's a no-win situation for me. Right? I mean, I'm not saying it is the right thing or the wrong thing, but I can be no more or less of a dad if I'm in jail than if I'm than if I made the choice of not going to jail. Right. I, I understand. Yeah. I, like, I have a picture in my mind of what you're saying. And I didn't personally go to the hospital, but I, I had family members of mine go to the hospital to let Caitlin know. Did you call her, like, to check on her or... Like even if you need I to never I never got the information to do that. And my family you know, I've been to two wards. I have PTSD. And anything that is bad my family tries to keep from me. Right? Mm-hmm. To the extent of they don't want me to fly off the hinges. Right. All right. So I never got the information of her room or anything like that. But even if I had, you know, I couldn't call and talk to Caitlin. If I called, they're going to put her mother on the phone. In which case, I mean, I wouldn't have nothing to say to her mother, right? My child is in the hospital for trying to take her life. It's just, it's a no win situation at that point. Right, or were that they... was sorry. the no, November-ish, but, you know, a month, month and a half before uh-huh. the incident. So, I, I put faith in the same system that did this to me, to the extent of, well, I thought that was their job. Right? I mean, I thought the Department of Family and Children's Services job was to ensure that children weren't being abused. I, mean, I thought that's what we paid taxes for. I think, too, though, more than anything, she wanted to feel acknowledged from you. Like, because, you know, love isn't just a noun. It's a, it's a verb, too. And I think effort, because for me, it was always like, okay, well, my mom's a bitch. I mean, I do agree with my dad on that. But why is he not forcing, like, trying, like, to, why is he not, even if it's for 10 seconds in a phone call, like, look, I know your mom's going to not let me talk to you, but I want more than anything to be able to. Well, I mean, I, I told her that several times in person. Okay. That's right. Funny. I mean, it, it's not like I, I never told her that, right? I gave her my phone number with a cell phone and told her specifically, if you ever need anything, to call me immediately. Anything. But I, that doesn't really do any good when you have two dictators. Right. You know, that, I mean, okay, so point in case is Anthony was on her social media yes. after she passed. Right. So any connection to me, they're going to get rid of anyway. Right. And and I'm the demonized person in this scenario to her every day. May I ask why Anthony was so had so much hatred toward you? Because I you know, Tammy, I understand y'all were like divorced, but what was his beef with you? I mean there's no telling. There's no telling, because Tammy demonized me to everybody, right? So, I mean, there's no telling what she may have told him, or, you know, he's obviously not very smart either. And quite frankly, I think they're both on the scale of sociopaths. Okay, I was wondering about that. Um, Well, I can get started with questions from viewers. And a lot of the questions have nothing really to do with what we're talking about right now. They're just interesting questions. uh Okay, the first one is from Ian H one nine eight four three, and this person said, "I'd like to know what he saw in Tammy. What were some of her good qualities before things went off the deep end?" Hindsight is twenty twenty. Pretty sure everybody can agree with that. And I don't. I don't know. I was seventeen when I met her in high school. Oh wow! Uh, so Caitlin was not a mistake, but the person I had Caitlin with. Was I mean that's just so were y'all ever in love or again it's hard to say you know when you're 17 you do things then when you look back you say man I was 17 I don't know why I did that I agree yeah uh, I, I can tell you that uh, my grandmother always 
had an extreme dislike for team, like from day one. Oh, um, well, that same person wants to know if you can remember at least one nice moment between Caitlin and her mother. Uh, specifically, not not really specifically. I mean, we had good times. I suppose, like any, you know, any. <laughs> I don't think there's ever such thing as a relationship that's just bad all the time. Right. Right. I mean, there are, there are times that are good and there are times that are bad. Uh, it right. wasn't like any specifically great moment per se. But Tammy has always had this proclivity to do the most outlandish thing, um, especially out in public. Just like just start screaming at the top of her lungs. I mean, just what any rational person would just consider like batshit crazy. See, that's why I pegged her as a narcissist because they tend to do what's called narcissistic rage, and and they're usually on the same spectrum as sociopaths. Yeah, well, I mean, she has always, yeah, she always had that. Uh, I I look past it a lot when I was younger, but uh, as far as the question goes, uh, I mean, we had. You know, we had the Christmases and the Thanksgiving and things like that. Uh, right. Um, well, the next question is from Benedict F. And he or she wants to know if, if it's true uh, that Tammy apologized to you during the funeral. Uh, multiple times. Oh. And after, like, when she come to my house twice. I mean, she, <laughs> she had the gall to tell my dad that she knows I blame her. I'm like. <laughs> wow. And I, I just don't know the level of ignorance you have to have to think that you're not going to be the one getting blamed when you're the custodial parent. That's narcissism also right there. That's She's even playing the victim at her own daughter's funeral. Um, well, I collapsed because her neighbor was there. And after the prayer, she came up to me and said that Caitlin had told her that she wanted to live with me. Hmm. Caitlin told the neighbor that? Yeah, well, I mean, that's what she said. Um, Was it not far before? I, I don't know. I, I pretty much hit the floor at that point. Because whether it was true or not, I know Tammy would never let that happen. Right. Right, I mean, that was her meal ticket. There was no way she was giving that up. Right. And a part of me, I know a lot of the people in the audience don't, they hear those words and they think, well, that it is possible that you could have like fought Tammy to battle all of that. But for instance, my mom, she stayed with my dad in like long enough to where he could pay taxes on her inheritance money. And then as soon as that was done with, she, that was it. I, that she basically gave and trapped him. That's why she gave birth to me so that she'd have a reason to make him stay as long as he did. And then that's when he started heavily drinking and that's when he lost his mind. But anyway, yeah. So I understand about the using. And I think a lot of the viewers, they don't really, unless they've lived that and they don't understand how a, a mother or a father can use their kid like that. And that's again, narcissism to the well, max. I, I did reach out to attorney. It's not like I said, well, that's it. I'm not even going to try. I reached out to attorneys. Two specific attorneys told me just about the same thing, which is that I might as well just donate $5,000 to them because I had zero chance of getting cut. And why was that? I have PTSD for one, and I live with my grandfather and my dad, and she's the mother. In the state of Georgia... You have to prove the mother is unfit to get custody if you're the father. Okay. And 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 just to clarify for people, there's no there's no legal definition of unfit. That is just completely subjective for whatever judge is hearing the case. Right. And you can't you can't prove something that's subjective. So I think it's really brave for you to admit the PTSD and how that would definitely conflict with parenting. But Debbie Catlett, she asked, if there was a child support order in place, wasn't there a visitation order? She also wanted to know, no. so there wasn't. No, the child support and child custody are two different courts. See, Tammy got the child support order before we were even divorced. Okay. Did she ever have a protective order against you filed in court? Uh, she got one... At Fort Bragg, 
but it was thrown out uh, right after she got it. Okay. And just so people are clear on that, it's also subjective. All a female has to do is go in and say, yes, I fear that there'll be something. I'm not, when she went into the court in North Carolina to get the protective uh, order against me, she claimed that she was scared I was going to stab her with one of my samurai swords that wasn't even real. Wallace, we had two guns in the house. She was worried about me stabbing her with a freaking sword. Yeah. Well, I, I know a guy who went to war and he had PTSD, and, and I'm not saying you were this way, but I know sometimes their unpredictability can make people a little paranoid, and maybe that's, I'm not trying to defend Tammy, but maybe that was why she thought that. Uh, Tammy, Tammy's always the one that instigates the violence. Okay. But then if you respond to the violence, she's immediately the victim. Okay. Karen G45750, she said, if there's no parenting or plan or visitation schedule, then he should have filed for it once he got out of the army. It doesn't take money, so you can't use that as an excuse. Fees are waived every day for court filings if income is below a certain amount. You don't have to have a lawyer either. It is better with one sometimes. However, you can still file yourself. That way people can't say you did not try. Why didn't he try for visitation? And I would say that these laws are different depending on what state and municipality you're in. So that, that's not factually correct for my situation. It could be where they're at. But again, these are not laws that apply to everybody in America. So you couldn't get, vis you couldn't get visitation? The way that you go about that is it has to go through the child custody court. And you're not filing things in the child custody court without an attorney and money. Like that. I don't. There's nothing that you're going to do in the municipalities here that's not going to cost you money. And there isn't a single judge in either one of these counties that are going to suggest you try to do that by yourself. Well, see, I'm, I'm not saying that you're lying, but from personal experience, when my husband and I were separated and I was trying to find a way that he could have visitation with them without it having to be in his home, because at that time he was still drinking, I, I noticed that, and this is just world, this is, or not worldwide, this is uh, nationwide. They have uh, like family service type associations or whatever that offer, um, and it, it doesn't cost any money. You basically, it's just through the, it's a government, it's a free government service. Or they have like a... a uh, yeah, where you take the child and then they show up there. Yeah, right. We have to here too, but they're not advocates for fathers. They're advocates for mothers. That's I mean, true, actually. That's true, because I didn't want to do that, and they didn't, and so they left me alone, so... Yeah, this is... It's one of these things that's like really hard to believe, right? It's, you'll have women shelters, but there are no men shelters. Right. You have women advocacy. There are no men advocacy. Right. It's, no, I, I, I understand. Have, if you don't have wealth uh, as a man, you know, again, the amount of hoops that you have to jump through is astronomically higher. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't want to make this into uh, a sex thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like men have it worse than women or anything like that. But it's just. Just reality. Fact. Yeah. Just reality. And, and this is this is in every state in America. Like men just don't have the forum in the court system. And they don't have the advocacy. If you got you can go to any any probate court right now in America and every time you see a woman you're gonna see several advocates with her. Uh -huh. But you'll see the man walking up by himself or with a family member because there just are no advocacy. Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a stereotype. I'm not saying it's okay, but the birth of women shelters and such, it was because statistically men were, no, even in the primal ages, men were known to disappear and women were left being the nurturers. And two, like you were saying in our previous interview about how kind of by default, the man was the breadwinner and the woman was the stay-at-home mom. And I feel like that dynamic is why it is the way it is today. It's a little outdated because nowadays you have... Oh, yeah. I, well, I'm not... I was not saying 
at all that it was never a necessity. Yeah. Because, of course, it was a necessity at some point. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I'm going to, I'm sorry. Um, Go ahead. Sorry. Sandra Anderson, she said, I know Matthew was separated from Caitlin's life and kept away from her because of Tammy. However, I don't understand when he was telling the story about Tammy locking Caitlin in a room and going to a party across the street. He said his chain of command found out and stated that Tammy needs to move off the base because she was jeopardizing his military career. What about the safety of Caitlin? Did anyone consider that? I understand his career is very important and I thank him for his service, but it sounds like many people, including him and the army, knew long ago that Caitlin was being mistreated. So again, this goes back to the advocacy. In the military, spouses, in particular female spouses, have multitude of advocacy to turn to. And the chain of command has one obligation, and that's to ensure that the $250,000 of taxpayer money that went into their soldier is ready to go to war. Okay. Uh, this is not, I mean, the Army isn't a daycare center. Mm -hmm. And I know how bad that sounds to a lot of people, but the Army, and well, the, just the military in general, the defense of the nation, mm -hmm. uh, the commanders, the commanders cannot be worried about uh, things that are going on in soldiers' personal lives. Right. To that extent. Uh, so, and that's, I mean, that's a long line to draw from her leave, locking Caitlin up in a room in a house where there are adults to driving Caitlin to commit suicide. Right. Did, did you call CPS time. about that? I'm curious about that. Did I call CPS about that? Yeah, because that's pretty horrific. Well, I was I was rather young. I was following the orders of my chain of command, so I did what my chain of command told me to do, mm -hmm. uh, which was, uh, you know, terminate the on-post housing, and she had to leave. But on the side note to that is her aunt did die in my house on post oh. when her mom and aunt came up to get her. Like, she overdosed on pills. Oh, okay. In my house on post. Wow. Did, did Caitlin, was she made privy to that? Well, she was really young. Right? So, I mean, she was there at the house. I don't know. Oh, wow. Uh, this is a random question that just popped into my head, but have have you ever had a history of drug use? Uh, marijuana. Like you dabbled in it, or? Uh, well, I mean, I use it for my PTSD. Oh, okay, that's right. Because it's far better than any pills. Take that. I don't take pills. I don't really. I'll go out and drink a beer every once in a while, but right. no, I don't do any other drugs. I didn't think so. I just wanted to clear the air on that because I know that people were curious. Yeah, no, doesn't. Never have, never will. Doesn't interest me in the spot. Okay. So, um, Ron N8, this is a totally different. This is not relevant to what we were talking about, but Ron N8 asks, what is your opinion of Cedartown or Cedartown, however you say it, and the area community-wise? In social terms, is the place as horrible as many residents have said it is? It's not great if you don't live in the richest part. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably like that in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. uh, right? I mean, if you live in... Manhattan, New York City is not that bad, but if you live in, you know, the Bronx, it's not good. Right. It's that type uh, where they live, you know, other than the trailer that they lived in, it's not like it was a terrible place to live. Uh, they made it bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, like, the schools here, were good? And... Well, I mean, that's kind of hard to say now. I ask because Caitlin's school was aware that she OD'd. And I know that if my son, my son, actually, he's nine and he's dramatic. And one time he just said, I hate my life. And they took that comment he made. This was just a month ago. So extreme that they actually made a report on it. And we've we've had to speak to social services because of that comment. So if, you know, let alone ODing, if somebody OD'd at a school, they'd be on top of that. So I, I, I do wonder about, is it pronounced Cedar Town? It's, it's Cedar Town. Okay. You know, like, like a cedar tree. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I didn't go to those schools. I went to Cedartown High School for like one day. Okay. And when I was there, there were Mexican games and, you know, it's pretty much where I was like not doing this. The, what I know about the school is she od at the school. They called the ambulance. But then after she did take her life, 
the assistant superintendent of the district put out a statement to one of the news outlets saying that the school system just had no idea Okay. that, that there was a problem. I mean, yeah, it really, it really okay. irked me when I read that. Mm-hmm. I just don't know the, the amount of ignorance, again, that you have to have to put out a statement like that. Um, right. But as far as, like, the quality of the school, I don't, I don't really know. I didn't I didn't go to those schools, really, other than the one day I went to your town high school. But, again, that was over a decade ago. Yeah. I think people are asking, too, because I know in the news there was another young girl who took her life in that same town. And it's not like it's New York City, you know, with a huge population. And for such a small town, it does seem like there's a lot of depression. Well, uh, well there is. Right, so this area was a big textile mill area, but a lot of our mills have left, and with them went all of the jobs. Uh, so much when I was growing up, my dad worked at a gay landlord plant, shut down, and within a year of it shutting down, the entire community just turned into one big mess factory. Oh. And I mean, that's just how quick it goes. Like, when the jobs go, the community is going. Mm -hmm. So Rod Stark wants to know, at what age Caitlin began her singing? Uh, She's always sung by the time she started talking. (laughs) Oh. I mean, Tammy always sang. uh, Oh. Was Tammy a good singer? Not particularly. But, again, I'm, I'm a terrible singer. But I would sing, you know... Yeah, so, so Caitlin grew up around a lot of uh, musical... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sandra Teague wants to know what occurred at Caitlin's funeral. A lot of us are curious about that. I mean, other than the obvious. Wasn't, wasn't any drama at the funeral. Uh, That's good. I ensured it from my side. It was pretty much, if, if I can be civil, you all are going to be civil. I was, again, as civil as humanly possible. I mean, it was freezing, it was drizzling, and I gave her my jacket. I gave Tammy my jacket oh. because she showed up with, with out one. Was Tammy, did she seem like out of her usual behavior? Like, was she distraught? Was she numb? Was she talkative? Did she do her hair and makeup? Like, I'm curious if she, because as a mother who like typically is like a glamour queen, I wouldn't want to do my hair. I wouldn't want to do my makeup. I would be a mess, just so distraught. I would be, I can't even imagine. So I'm wondering what her demeanor was. Well, she was hysterical for a lot of it. Uh, When you say hysterical, what do you mean? Like, how do you, how do you visualize it? Well, I don't know. It's so, it's so hard to gauge uh, anymore. Like, the amount of acting that people can do. Right. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like to prescribe motive to things like that. Like, I'm not I'm not going to say one way or another if she was actually mourning or any of that. Uh, makeup, I'm not. I don't remember. I don't. I wasn't really trying to pay a whole lot of attention to her okay. necessarily. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Um, Shannon. I didn't oh, have a whole lot of say in the funeral. That, that's pretty much... Sorry, you didn't have a whole lot of say, you said? No. Like, they just, they did everything they could to shut me out. Uh, I wanted Caitlin cremated. Uh, that got shut down. I, I thought cremation made more sense. She would get half the ashes, I get half the ashes. Oh. Uh, we have my grandmother cremated. I'm sorry, that's just, wow, but just hearing the word cremated in the same sentence as, as Caitlin is just really, it's upsetting, or any, I'm sorry, I, I must, I'm like you, I believe more in cremation, but, um, so, Shannon Ribron, she said, could you ask Caitlin's dad if he ever visits her grave, or does Tammy keep him from there? Um, no, Tammy, Tammy has no control over my life anymore, I've been by there, <sighs> I'm, I'm not real big on the, the going to the grave. I really I relate to you there. I just well, I, I don't I don't prescribe to an afterlife. Mm-hmm. All right, so <sighs> for me, she's just gone. And and I. 
again, I'm her her memory has she she is an angel to so many people and and I'm like you I'm completely agnostic and I I say that instead of atheist because I I don't I don't know anything but I I'm not I don't believe in superstition and and so I I understand what you're saying but um she and when I say angel I mean her her influence on us even grown women and men it you know, Jesus walked the earth, they say, and influenced a lot of people. And people can get mad at me for bringing Jesus up in the same sentence. But I feel like Caitlin's influence, her heart of gold, when she was she was being bullied. And then what did she do? She put out a video at 12 years old while being bullied, telling people not to bully and lifting others up. So I feel like even though she's gone, she will always live longer than most. She is just amazing. So, uh Let's see another question. There aren't, I think there's only one left. Um, no, that's really all because the other questions are pretty much still along the lines of visitation and fight you. Okay, I, I didn't post this one because I had mentioned it to you previously and, and you said you don't really know what to say. Um, and that's fine. If you don't really know what to say, that's fine. Uh, people appreciate how honest you've been. When one girl said, okay, so Anthony threatened to basically threatened you with violence and she said big whoops so what like one person said if their daughter had done what Caitlin did that they would have they would have not cared at that point they would have gone and beat Anthony you know basically almost killed him and I know that's what people are still gonna say that's ignorance is bliss mm -hmm. I don't know that's all I can say I'm not <laughs> I don't like violence don't like it it sounds weird with somebody who's in two wars but maybe it's because I was in two wars that's well, it's structured violence, too. I think, didn't Anthony own guns in the same home as where Caitlin was at the time? Well, the guns don't... The guns... Oh, I'm not scared of dying. Well, I'm saying because Caitlin was I, in I the home. I jumped out of planes. Uh, I've had bullets whiz by my head. You know, you get hear the bullet crack the wind before you even heard the gunshot. The dying doesn't scare me. Violence is a no-sum game. If I go beat him... He's not going to learn a lesson, right? He's just going to come back worse. Or, you know, it turns from Caitlyn taking her life to them actually killing her. See, that's, that's what I was going to ask you, is were you ever worried about Tammy and Anthony doing something to Caitlyn despite you, or? Well, not necessarily Tammy, right? Because, again, she used Caitlyn so much against me for money that, it, you know, it's hard for me to draw any other conclusion than... You know, she looked at Caitlin and saw money. Mm -hmm. Again, my family is, is fairly wealthy, and we're extremely wealthy compared to her family. Uh, so if you could go back in time and you knew then what you know now about what was going on in that trailer, because you did tell me that you knew it was filthy, but you didn't know to that degree what was going on. And I'm saying like a month before Caitlin did what she did to herself, what would you do? Well, I mean... It, at that point, I'm calling the sheriff's department and telling them they're going to meet me over there and either we're going to do this peacefully or they're going to have a lot of news around them. Mm -hmm. Good, good. That's exactly what I would do, I, too. I mean, again, I'm not, I don't like violence, but if it's, if it's the last thing that there is, then obviously I'll do it. I mean, I went to war, right? So all of the diplomacy has been exhausted, and obviously violence is a last means to solving a problem. Mm -hmm. But at that point, it wouldn't be, you know, me going in to be violent. It would be me going in with the authority to stop criminal behavior. Okay. And what would you have said to Caitlin if, if um, not at that, not the, this is a different situation. If, if you could tell Caitlin anything right now, like let's pretend like you and I are superstitious and we're thinking along the lines of religious people. If the clouds opened up, and you could speak to her for one minute. What would you, just one minute max, what would you want to tell her? That I loved her very much. I, I did a lot of things for her. My family loved her very much. I wish I would have known.
I'm so sorry. But I think it's important. Um, I... We love her very much. I do believe that. Not that my opinion matters, but I do believe that. Um, before I end it, I do want to ask, uh, just because it was such a reoccurring theme in her videos, she would say, I can't do this anymore. And it, I know it was regarding her mother and watching her siblings and Anthony. And so what do you, as her dad, like, what do you, when she would say that when it comes to Tammy, I'm really curious what, when she's saying, I can't do this anymore, what do you think Tammy was? Because you lived with her. I mean, y'all were a couple at one point. I'm wondering what you think it was like to live with her as a child. Cinderella. Mm. So never satisfied? Not never satisfied. Uh, a tool. Tammy wants to go do something. Caitlin's the tool to watch the kid. Tammy wants money. Caitlin is the tool to get money. Okay. So she sees everyone as, as objects. For sure. Based on what you told me of Tammy's uh, childhood, I'm not justifying how Tammy is, but I, it does seem like because of all of the, the insanity and dysfunction and tragedy, I mean, she did have some serious tragedy. I mean, didn't you say her dad either killed himself? Yeah, but that wasn't during her childhood. Her dad killed himself after I got out of airborne school. She put Caitlin through the exact same thing that she would have went through. Right. Do, do you think anyone ever told Caitlin that you had PTSD? Or did you ever tell her so maybe she would... I know she was so young, but she was also so smart. And I think maybe if she had been more informed about... Because if someone had told me at a young age, look, your dad... I know it seems like he's just living it up and, you know, being a bachelor, but he's actually depressed. He, he lives in a one-bedroom apartment by himself. He's on disability. You know, if someone had told me he's got dementia from his alcohol, you know, I would have been able to grasp that he wasn't ignoring me because it's obvious that Caitlin felt ignored and I'm not trying to make you feel bad but you know that's it's obvious that that's how she was interpreting that well I mean I told her several times how much I loved her and that I was there for her and all of that right but I'm not there every day and every day she's hearing a completely opposite story mm-hmm no, and I guarantee you PTSD wasn't brought up. But I'm talking to, you know, not a 12-year-old girl, but a 9- and 10-year-old girl. Mm -hmm. That definitely is not going to understand what PTSD is. Right. Um, and I try to shelter her from that cold reality. Uh, like, I'm assuming most decent parents don't talk to their kids about war, right? It's just not that. Um, when I was in Iraq, I wrote her every day. Oh, did she? Do you know if she got the letters? No. I mean, Tammy couldn't tell you the truth if her pinned on it. So getting any real information out of Tammy is it's almost impossible. Is, is she uh, a compulsive liar? It's worse. It's worse than compulsive. A pathological? You could, have, you could have her on a video and she would still tell you. That it wasn't her. Okay, that's that's a sociopath then, because even when you put evidence in front of a sociopath, they'll still deny it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, like the Fort Bragg incident, there were five sworn statements written that all said the same thing, and Tammy just denied and denied and denied. She had a carpet burn on her back. And what was and this from? still denied it. What are you referring to? Having sex on the carpet. Oh, okay. Oh, my gosh. Right. And, and she was still denied, right? So. Well, that's pretty addressed. I mean, I can, I think most partners who are cheating are going to deny it, but like about little things, like just because sociopaths have a tendency to lie about what they even ate for breakfast. Like they just. Oh, well, <laughs> she told my chain command that she had no money and there was no food in the house. Mm -hmm. Not a day after we went grocery shopping. Oh, wow. Right. And I mean, you know, this, all of that compiled into my chain of command, and that's it, right? So that last part was just the last little incident of, she's got to go. Like, mm -hmm. again, I'm getting ready to go to war, and this is just, you can't have soldiers 
going into a war zone with all of this on their mind. Right. right? It's just, that's a disaster waiting to happen. Right. Um, but yeah, she's a sociopath. There's no, mm-hmm. there's no denying that. Like it's, yeah. And I don't know if it's because of the drugs or if it's just her genetic wiring. I don't know. but No, she's always been that way. Does it run always. in her family? Because usually people I know, it, it runs like they have siblings who compulsive. Like I have two in-laws related to my husband who are like from the same egg. They lie so much. Uh, I would say probably. I, I've never had enough conversation with the rest of them. But, I mean, well, yeah, so Tammy and her older sister Daphne are for sure sociopaths. They lie, they steal, they cheat. Oh, okay. Yeah, kleptomania, that's a big, that's a huge indicator. I mean, no. even from, even from their own family. Okay, yep, that's, that's confirmed a right. lot. There, there's nothing out of bounds for them, and they feel like they're entitled to everything, or they're right. owed they're owed something from everybody. Right. And then to have people that, well, they probably didn't know where you live. <laughs> yeah, well, it didn't take them too long to find out after she killed herself. You know, it's like, again, this is not an excuse. And, uh, so it sounds like since Caitlin was just a tool and, and it's obvious that Tammy wasn't really a mother. I mean, she I doubt she ever read books to her or took her to the park or anything that mothers do with their 12-year-olds. I'm no, wondering. I don't think Tammy could read. Really? Like you're not joking? No, I'm not joking. I can Maybe tell. At, at like a, a fifth grade level, she didn't graduate high school. Well, I, I actually didn't even attend high school at all. But um, I, I did notice that whenever she writes on Facebook, it's pretty incoherent and the grammar is horrific. And, and it's my son's nine and he writes better. My six-year-old too. So. Right. Well, I, you know, again, I told you, is there a parent that she's not smart? Like, not one of those are descriptive for her um but you know i mean i tried we were in fort bragg i tried to get her to go to school Mm -hmm. i mean it was free she wouldn't do it she would rather be online talking to other guys scripting on webcam or oh wow you know just just outlandish things and just make up the most ridiculous of why she couldn't why would she do the schooling. What right? was her like, reason? It's almost like she just wanted me to do the schooling for her. So what was her, like, what would she say when you'd ask her why she won't? I, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do this. And you she know, might, you know, maybe she... I'm like, you, you know how to turn a damn webcam on. You know how to find guys to strip for on the internet. I mean, she might have legitimately been, because I can tell you, like, I... I actually stopped going past the seventh grade and then but that was because of homelessness and other crazy stuff but I still sought out my own education like online and but like I still haven't attended college or anything and my husband has also hinted why don't you go but for me there I, ha- I really have legitimate fears like when it comes to certain advanced parts of math that I'm embarrassed I'm not as no, 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 no. it wasn't this because she wouldn't even try to go to the education portion right isn't it? Mm-hmm. You wouldn't even type it in the web browser. It wasn't oh. the the classes scared her. She wasn't going to do it. So it was. She wasn't even making it an option at all. It's not even not even making an attempt. So you know how a lot of druggies, uh, parents, a lot of times if they have another family member, like a, a grandparent or an aunt, they'll just let the kids stay there because it makes their life easier. They can do their drugs and be losers. Like how come she didn't just go ahead and let? Like was it because she was using Caitlin as a babysitter? I'm, I don't understand why as a druggie. She would even pretend to play mom. Well, I don't know when the drugs started. Like, she didn't use drugs when she was with me. Like, that was not, that wasn't going to happen. The 80 second is notorious for drug tests. Well, even before the drugs, but, I mean, she was like, still, obviously, she was kind of, I don't want to use the word slutty, but she was, her main priority seemed to be sexual gratification from various males. So if that's the case, then, like, why did she even want to pretend to be a mom? Was there ever a time that she just said, can I bring Caitlin to your parents, or can I bring... No, 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 no. That, I, it, I think it's the fear that if she did it once, that the gig was up. So it was about control, basically? It's always about control. Okay. Right? And the moment that she gives that up, it's, it's so much about control that I couldn't even take Caitlin on vacation. Because I, I asked to take Caitlin down to Florida. When, when was that? After I got out of the army. 
See, I think that might be jealousy because I don't know what mother wouldn't want their child, especially who's living in the filth that Caitlin was, to go to the beach with their dad, who's not on drugs. I don't... I mean, that's, that's just it, right? It's... So I see what you're... It would, it she would, will say, I wanted you to be a part of her life, but then her actions are completely opposite of that. Do you think there was fear no. that... that that she knew Caitlin would would prefer you over her? Of course, of course. Or, you know, Caitlin gets two or three days away and starts feeling more comfortable with talking about things that are really going on in that trailer. Mm -hmm. right? It's just a measure of fear from Tammy, control. Like a uh, dictator, like you said, because I thought that was a yeah, perfect... I mean, it's exactly like a dictator. Brainwash, propaganda, keeping them uh, sheltered and not allowing them to get other... Yeah, okay. Right. I mean, the last conversation I had with Caitlin about school was her complaining. She com was complaining about having to learn about uh, other countries. Why? Right. Because I don't live in other countries. I don't need to know about other countries. And I, was, I, I know that's coming from your mom. Mm -hmm. and, and your ignorant ass stepfather. Right. right? And I, I, you know, I, I tried to explain to her, you may not live in those countries, but it's important for you to learn. Awareness, yeah. You need to know these things because whether or not you live in those countries, what those countries do will ultimately affect you in some way, shape, or form. Right. We, we value education very highly in my family. I can tell. I my grandmother's side, it's, okay, so my grandmother had nine brothers and sisters, and my grandfather had 13 brothers and sisters. Oh. Uh, I, I told you back with Kentucky. I mean, they, they had kids to farm, literally. Oh. We were talking about just after the Great Depression. Oh, okay. Uh, so, like, the late 30s or the early 40s, or? Yeah, my grandfather was born in 1938. Okay. And he was one of the younger of his. But out of my grandmother's side, six of them became educators. That's impressive. Yeah. Education is highly valued. And uh, I got a GED. Uh, I didn't graduate high school because I was in the army before my high school class graduated. Mm -hmm. uh, dumb choices on my part. But I educate myself every day. Right. That's I also got a GED. I read. I find valuable resources. Uh, I, I just value knowledge. I, I would rather be knowledgeable. So it's it's almost like it was a form of abuse then. Kind. I mean, what how Tammy was willfully trying to keep Caitlin. Well, I'm I'm assuming that Caitlin's intelligence really scared Tammy, right? To the extent that she had to know eventually Caitlin was going to see through the bullshit. And I think that had a lot to do with Caitlin's um, taking her life because I've noticed people. It's been it's been proven, and it makes sense that people with a heightened awareness and a higher intellect are more depressed and they're more prone to suicide and and um and that like ignorance is bliss you don't ever see a person with down syndrome killing themselves you don't ever see um you know children who aren't as intelligent as caitlin you know caitlin flat out told her mother you're nothing but a druggie and a lot of kids would have just gone into submission and they would have just been like a little duckling and not really thought about anything but i think for caitlin she was so aware of how she was being treated and with that sort of awareness see the world for what it is exactly there's no candy coated lens right for me when i was in elementary school up until the third grade i thought that the dumb kids in class were just playing dumb to get out of things like, i didn't <laughs> realize that there really are dumb people <laughs> yeah <laughs> And it, it, it infuriated me. It infuriated me to have to sit in that classroom and listen to the teacher explain the same thing over and over and over. Right. It's, it is almost offensive. And I got so quickly. I mean, I was just like, you can quit playing dumb now so we can move on. Mm -hmm. Right. But right around the third grade, I realized they really are dumb. Holy crap. I wonder if Caitlin had the, those same realizations. I'm sure she did. 
Like it's, I mean, it's just bound to happen for anybody like that. Um, well, you know, even in adulthood, I still have that realization where I'm like, wow, um, there are even like 80 year olds who still have no wisdom. Okay. Hello. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. If there's anything you want to add before I, I uh, like, if you just want to maybe tell people, uh, you know, thanks for hearing me out or, I mean, you don't have to. Well, I mean, uh, I, I don't know how mentally prepared I was for this. Mm -hmm. I thought, I thought I was ready. Yeah, I mean, I didn't sleep at all last night. Because of our discussion, or? Well, I mean, just again, like I said, playing the conversation over and over and over. I, I don't write things down in a script like mm -hmm. a lot of people do, because I would, I would be writing forever. Like, I, I literally just play conversations over and over and over, and I talk them out. Right. Until I, until I find the sweet spot, if you will. I can articulate myself in this way, and I think that the most rational way is going to come across where hopefully I can't be taken out of context and this turn into a disaster. Well, I don't. I don't think. Um... Like I said, my life is it reads like a fictional novel already. So I don't. I don't need to embellish anything. My life's already unbelievable. So I'm, I've already. And that's uh, where I started feeling. Point, uh, feeling like I have to prove everything just because it's so out of touch. Uh, it's unbelievable, like you said. Normal, yeah. Just un so last night I, I, felt, I felt really bad, um, actually. I, I was thinking, what if I'm making this guy, I don't want to make him suicidal. I don't want to make him, you know, I don't want him to feel like he's being targeted or, and then, because um, then I started thinking, you know, what would... Would Caitlin be mad at me for doing this? And and then that's when I was lying in bed last night talking to you. And I looked at your page. And after you and I were done talking, I like, that's when I started looking at the pictures of the car or and looking at, I just started like thinking really negatively. And it was because I'm just so afraid of, I, I keep thinking of my dad who truly, truly is a selfish a-hole. And so, and you know, I keep, but um, every time I speak to you, I, I realize it reminds me of how the system is. And it reminds me of how my mom was with my dad and, and money. And so I just, I don't want you to. Well, I mean, again, it's uh, from the outside looking in, I can see people would, you know, want to draw all kinds of conclusions. You know, this is why my Facebook is private. I don't accept people. I, I, just, I don't have the time to explain this to everybody. You know, again, because people will dig stuff up, take it completely out of context without having any information. And Yeah, you like, have to be cautious with who you let in, for sure. Right, like I'm just not. Um, and they'll take advantage, too, of the fact that you're, you know, in a vulnerable position. I feel like it's very, very ballsy of you to come out and say anything knowing that people can misconstrue what you're saying um any of the of rational people like i said i don't i'm not pay attention to well, i think too the heaviness of this whole situation is you want you you understand that for a lot of people it is uh i mean there were people who just heard the beginning of the interview and they couldn't even listen to more because they were still so upset and for me it's it's almost surreal still that I am speaking to the father of Caitlin just because she, you know, I can't really think of a single day that goes by that I don't think of Caitlin. Like, I, for instance, I've never believed in karma, but I have these like kind of superstitious moments where I'm like, well, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe good energies do like are the result of being good or whatever. But then I think of Caitlin and I think, no, mm -mm. and then, you know, other things too, like the Holocaust and what have you. But like Caitlin, I just keep thinking of Caitlin, like, nope her situation is proof that sometimes bad things happen to amazing people for no reason. So, that is true. And, and I know that religious people would argue and say that, you know, you don't know what the reason was. Uh, you even said that she's touched. Yeah. But, but they have all kinds of crazy and explanations. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually going to get up now. So. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Yeah, of course.